Experience brings wisdom, and Congress could use a little of it. That's according to 101-year-old congressional hopeful Joe Newman. The centurion from Sarasota recently announced a bid for Congress. Newman intends to run as a write-in candidate against Republican incumbent Vern Buchanan. A win in the West Coast District would make Newman the oldest member of Congress by a decade or more. But he believes that living through the Great Depression, Social Security's creation, and other watershed events has given him insights that could help the nation at this difficult juncture. Newman describes himself on his campaign website as a fiery advocate of social change for more than half a century. Expect milk to get more expensive this spring. Analysts say the price of a gallon of milk could hit a record high for U.S. consumers in March. This is being attributed to both strong global demand and stagnant production in other countries. These factors have led to increased exports of U.S. dairy products in recent months. A 36-year-old Maryland man who worked for the National Security Agency is accused of a heinous crime. Brian Patrick O'Callaghan of Damascus allegedly murdered his adopted three-year-old son. He's being charged with first-degree murder and child abuse. In court this week, O'Callaghan's attorney said the suspect worked for the NSA as chief of its Korean division. The suspect adopted the boy from Korea in October. A 55-year-old man on death row for a grisly double murder 26 years ago will be executed by lethal injection on March 20th. That decision was reached by Governor Rick Scott, who signed a death warrant for Boynton Beach native Robert Laverne Henry. Henry is an ex-Marine who murdered two Deerfield Beach fabric store clerks in 1988. The victims were Phyllis Harris and Janet Cox Thermidor. Henry, working as the store's maintenance man, bludgeoned both women with a hammer, doused them with a flammable liquid, and then set them on fire. When Governor Scott approved Henry's execution last week, it was less than 24 hours after the execution of Juan Carlos Chavez for the 1995 murder, rape, and dismemberment of nine-year-old Jimmy Rice in Miami-Dade County. That execution had been recently delayed at the last minute, but was finally carried out. Food, wine, and fun comprise the popular food network South Beach Wine and Food Festival. The big event is once again upon us for the 13th straight year. The finest names in the wine and culinary industries visit South Florida today through Sunday. To attend, head on down to the Art Deco District at Miami Beach. You never really know who your friends are. When former Republican Governor Charlie Crist visited Palm Beach yesterday to autograph copies of his new book, about 30 Republican activists were waiting for him with signs that read, Charlie Crist, Obama's favorite Democrat, among other unflattering messages. The Republican protesters, who may have been party allies with Crist at one time, organized the protest via email. They also arranged for a truck to pass by the book signing. It featured a large message about Chris's one-term Florida governorship. The sign stated, Charlie Crist ran away, 832,000 jobs lost. That was a reference to the economic problems which hit the state during Crist's term. Crist is seeking the government's chair in Florida as a Democrat. Yesterday, journalistic icons Bob Woodward and Carl Bernstein were warmly welcomed in Boca Raton, where they spoke for 90 minutes about their news careers. The two are best known for breaking Washington, D.C.'s Watergate scandal. That scandal led to President Richard Nixon's resignation and gave an unelected presidency to Gerald Ford, who served as Nixon's vice president. Woodward and Bernstein were portrayed by Robert Redford and Dustin Hoffman in the acclaimed movie, All the President's Men. They told yesterday's audience at Florida Atlantic University that, at first, they didn't fully grasp the Watergate scandal's magnitude. The two signed books after their remarks.